So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Open Mandriva LX5 Technical Preview. This new beta was released on July 27th of 2022, and I don't actually know a whole lot about Open Mandriva. It's one of those distros that I've, I've heard about and I have like used as like a preview off and on, but I honestly don't know a whole lot about this one. It shares a lot in common with OpenSUSE in that both distros are from Europe. Open Mandriva is French and OpenSUSE is German. I guess it like it started in Germany. They're both known for using the Qt desktop and they both use RPM like they're based on, or I guess they were based on Enterprise Linux way back in the day. So Open Mandriva has a cool little welcome app, but we're not gonna look at this right now. We're gonna close it and we're going to go straight to install. I'm recording this one a little bit differently. Usually I do like a sort of scripted thing where I go through and try to record all the footage and then talk over it. But right now I'm actually recording as I'm speaking or I'm speaking as I'm recording. So it's more like, it's almost, for me, it's like a live distro sort of review thing. But for you, hopefully it's, I don't know, hopefully it works. So I'm using the Terry Zaw machine. So there's stuff already installed here. So we'll wipe it out. And there's two, I noticed that there were two file systems to choose from when I was testing in the VM. There's F2FS and EXT4. I think, isn't F2FS supposed to be for like flash media and stuff? Or has it changed and now you can just install it? We're going to stick with EXT4 because I know it works. And this is a beta and I'm sure we're going to run into issues and I don't want to make things more complicated than they need to be by using some weird file system. So the installer is Calamares. It's very simple. It's just these screens with nothing extra and we're already installing. So let me go ahead and time how long this takes and I'll fast forward and I'll tell you how long it took to install on the pitiful little Terry Zaw machine. And now we're installing the bootloader. This was actually pretty quick. We're only three minutes in. I like that there's, um, there's a dog, some kind of dog, and there are paws here just a minute ago. It says, take your time, it will take approximately 15 minutes, and we're only three and a half minutes in, so that's pretty good. Uh-oh. This is just empty. This probably just isn't updating, because it's clearly doing something. And that's it, we're all done. That was under four minutes for an install. That's pretty darn fast. I think the fastest install I've ever seen was Solus Linux. And it's probably under four minutes, but this is pretty good, especially for a technical beta. And here's the Open Mandriva bootloader. It just says Open Mandriva LX. I should probably know what LX stands for. To me, it sounds like LX, like luxury, but it probably it probably means something else. I always like bootloaders that let you drop straight into the, the system firmware setup. That's a nice little touch. Now you can see Terry Zaw's old, old school BIOS screen. But let's drop into the desktop, shall we? Wow, I have to say that I was a little concerned installing a Linux distro I'm not super familiar with, Open Mandriva, on the Terry Zaw machine, which uh, historically can't like do anything. This installed fast, it booted fast, it seems to be running okay. Um, I'm not seeing any, any glitches or anything. We'll move the window around, looks good. Yeah, this is solid. Well, let's check out this, this welcome app and see what this is all about. About this program, Open Mandriva Welcome. It reminds me a bit of the welcome app from KAOS, and it's probably written in Qt or uh, Qt Quick or QML or whatever. Ah, it says Qt 5 Web Engine right there, so it definitely is. I wonder if it's actually the same app. How funny would that be? It looks like they do the app curation thing. That's basically what this is. You go here and it's just gonna list a bunch of apps. These aren't all of the apps available, but these are ones curated by the maintainers. And I actually like that because new users into Linux, they're not gonna know what is available. They might have an idea, but having some sort of curation thing is cool. In this features section, it talks about uh, new features and major changes published by the Open Mandriva Association. We've got a new kernel, Linux kernel 518.12, KDE Plasma 525.3, Liberate Office 7.4, the OM Control Center. This is Open Mandriva's control center, which it inherited from Mandriva itself. It's kind of like YAST, but less, um, well, we'll look at it in a bit. OM Feeling Like. 
you can configure your desktop to look and feel similar to other systems you may be used to. So um, think Zorin might have this, Farron OS has this, a lot of distros have this sort of um, make, your, make your desktop look like something you've used before sort of application. There's some fresh packages, of course, not gonna list the versions, but with any new upgrade, I'd expect to have later packages. And ABF, Automated Build Farm, from what I understand, this is like OpenSUSE's OBS. It's just a, a continuous delivery system that is constantly building and shipping stuff. So that's cool. It's also really cool that Open Mandriva has this, this little Linux distro that not very many people know of has this big infrastructure piece in the background that keeps everything running properly. Some bigger distros don't even have anything like that, so that's cool. And they're calling this one internally Open Mandriva LX Release 4.90 Nickel. And it says Cooker here, and I think Cooker is rolling or testing the way that like um, Bullseye or Sid is the code name for Debian. Cooker is a code name for Open Mandriva, I think. That's what I remember reading. Anyway, that's enough of the welcome app. Let's check out this desktop. It looks like a pretty run-of-the-mill KDE desktop with a couple things that make it unique. I like this icon here. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't used KDE in quite a while, so if they updated the style, uh, that's, that's cool, but I'm not, I don't remember the little icon looking like that. They definitely updated, or at least made changes to Dolphin. Uh, there's some stuff here that I don't remember, but it, I mean, again, maybe it's standard. I don't really use KDE much anymore, so what, what am I saying? So we open a bunch of apps. It has Kate for the text editor, under graphics, it's pretty standard KDE setup. Digicam, Gwynview, Krita, Ocular for looking at documents. Falcon is the web browser. And I saw the PIM suite. I really wish it didn't close this thing every time something opened. Ah, uh, holy moly. This isn't Open Mandriva. This is definitely just the way KDE is finding my mouse cursor, but it's kind of annoying. All right, so we have Kmail, uh, Ktorrent, Again, all the standard KDE things. There is simple screen recorder. I'm kind of interested to see how that works. So before I do that, notice how these, these uh, what do you call these? Um, window titles, window things in this bar here, they're stacked on top of each other. That's a KDE thing. I remember, I think this used to be the default for KDE 4, how the, the window bars would just kind of stack on top of each other. It's kind of cool, I guess. I don't really have... Maybe this, this part of the, the bar is like way too long. It's like double the length of the title, but eh, it's fine. So Simple Screen Recorder is the tool that I used way back in the day when I started the channel to record everything because OBS either wasn't a thing or it wasn't on, on Linux at the time. And I used to be really familiar with this, but now I, I don't know. Let's just try to record this, see what it does. Uh, live stream, high quality, sure. Yeah, let's do it. You did not select an output file, okay. So it doesn't set the default. We'll just call it test and try again. Start recording. And it crashed. Okay, maybe we'll circle back to that. It's probably, I don't think it's open entry, but it's probably Terry Zod doing something stupid. On new desktops, I always like to see what kind of themes they have. And I closed, closed off and let me reopen that. We've got a, dolph a dark theme, which looks like KDE's dark theme, and we have a light theme. Actually, this looks really good. Again, I don't, I don't know if this is standard KDE or if this, if they've done something to it. It's KDE 5.25. I, I should probably know what the latest version is, but I don't, and I'm sure that you guys can tell me. And if you're not familiar with Terry Zah, Terry Zah has been a staple on the show for or on the channel for over a year, I think. I'm gonna start using it more for videos like this one, but it's a dual core Intel Celeron N3350 running at 1.1 gigahertz with four gigabytes of RAM. So this is, for all intents and purposes, a low spec machine, which is why I'm so impressed with how well it's running this. I was expecting it to really stumble hard and it's actually running just fine. Why don't we open up K, not KInfo, KSysGuard? Do we have KSysGuard? We don't. Do we have a monitor? We have the system monitor. I'm guessing that KSysGuard is being replaced by this thing, which is kind of a shame because this, this is not KSysGuard. This is just an application monitor, which is fine. 
but it doesn't replace the functionality that case discard offers but that's an aside i was interested to see what the performance is like what the system's doing and honestly 50 percent out of 200 so 200 is both cores 50 percent is what a fourth so this isn't great but it's not it's good considering terry Zaw, but it's not like it seems like it's working a little harder than it should but as a user i don't feel it everything looks and feels snappy we turn on some K-Win effects and look at that. It has transparency and it's wobbly. Dang. Yeah, I'm impressed. This is solid. What a delightful surprise. A lot of times, now I'm, I'm not, nothing bad towards smaller distros or, or obscure distros, but a lot of times they're kind of a mess. Sometimes network drivers and things don't work, but so far uh, this is running perfectly. I have my, I'm jacked in to uh, Ethernet, but it looks like all of my Wi-Fi stuff works. Let's check it out. Let's see if we can connect to Wi-Fi. I remember when I tested KAOS, it did not detect the display driver, and there's, I couldn't, I couldn't get it to work. But look at that. We have Ethernet, obviously, and Wi-Fi worked right out of the box without having to install anything else. So, dang, this is looking good. So as far as I can tell, Mandriva doesn't do anything special to the system themes. It's just Breeze. So we played around with Dark and Light already. There aren't any new application styles. The colors are probably just default. Window decorations also seem default. Breeze, yep. And the fonts are Noto Sans with Hack. And the icons are probably just Breeze. So this is basically bone stock default KDE. And if I'm wrong and I missed something, please let me know. But it does have its own splash screen, so maybe not totally bone stock default, but pretty close. And you can change the bootloader splash screen here too. That's new. Maybe that's a KDE thing, but that's cool. I like that. I don't know if you've noticed, but there are desktop icons and they're horizontal instead of vertical. That's, that's different. Take a look at the wallpapers and see what we have. The Open Mandriva flowers, I think, have been there for a while. What's the other distro that does the flower thing? There are some nice backgrounds, so wow, there's a lot of nice backgrounds. Why on earth is this one here? Just a, a low... There must be a story to this because the car is blown up and the resolution is off, but the mercury, all this stuff is like... But look at the shadows and look at the... Uh, License plate? Like, what is the story with this? Is Mercury an old version that they're keeping around or something? I don't know. <laughs> Open Mandriva Mobile? What is this? Another really low res uh, image. I don't know what's going on there. Nitrogen. So, a, a lot of distros save the old backgrounds from old releases. And I'm guessing that's what's going on. This is a gorgeous picture, but wow, the resolution is really poor. Let's just go back to the original and that's how it should look so here's your your basic default open mandriva desktop let's take a look at some of the the special sauce that the open mandriva team added so i think everything is going to be under settings i'm not seeing anything else i do like that there's an entry specific for crashed process viewers it's handy to have you never know when stuff is going to crash on you so we'll take a look at desktop presets. This is where you can make your setup look like a ordinary plasma. I'm kind of interested, what's the difference? Oh, it'll probably change this bottom bar, huh? Uh, oh no, it's still loading. Wow, it's been, there we go. It took it a little bit. The preset has been switched to plasma since not all applications automatically reload. Do you want to log out? So it, it put the icons back here. This is. It, this probably isn't exactly what it's supposed to look like, like this little icon, you can barely see it and stuff, but you get the idea. It's, like I said earlier, it's the same as a lot of distros that have this. Uh, Ubuntu might be interesting. It should move the panel to the side. Oh, it needs an additional icon pack and a cute theme. After confirming the password, that dialogue will seem to hang for a while. I actually appreciate this. If if you're a user that actually reads it. To be honest, if I wasn't streaming, I wouldn't read this. But if if you read this, then you'll know kind of what's going on. I've seen distros in the past that 
uh, just like you, you click a script and it pops up and asks for your password, that's really bad practice. You shouldn't have scripts just pop up and ask for authentication like that. So it's nice that this does. And it's also nice that it says that it's hanging because, well, it's hanging. <laughs> oh, it's doing something. It just took my panel away. Oh dear. Uh, this is somewhat like Ubuntu. Let's actually log out and log back in and see if it makes a difference. So I've been hanging at this splash screen for quite a while. There we go. That, that took a really long time for some reason. I don't know what that was about. So this, this theme seems a little bit borked, but you know, you can't have everything, I guess. That's what you get for trying to set up some, this actually looks pretty good though. Like all things considered, this little dashboard looks pretty good. Anyways, let's, let's get it back to default and we'll take a look at the Mandriva control panel and stuff. If I remember how to get back to it. Desktop presets, there we go. Let's revert this and then we'll take a look at the control center thing. All right, feast your eyes upon Open Mandriva's control center. Hi, EG. Open Mandriva control center is a set of tools to help you configure your system in each its part. So I think I said earlier, this is like Yast. Uh, that might have been a bit of an overstatement. This is a custom application. I don't think it inherited anything besides the name from the original Mandriva control center. And it, it's just kind of another QML, HTML app, it seems. With I mean, these are more or less just kind of curated options, right? Like software points you at DNF Drake, which is this DNF Dragora or Dragora, whatever. Oh, here's it DNF Dragora. So DNF Drake must be something different. We've got the distro picker, which we're gonna have to mess with in just a little bit. By the way, these aren't doing anything. I'm clicking them and they're not doing anything. So I don't know, maybe this is a new app for version five. So we can't be too, too critical about it. The hardware section has more curated stuff, which is cool if you're a new user and you don't know how to configure your printer or start up your Bluetooth, this could help you out. There's a separate section for disks. We've got network, which has one single option. Is this the KDE network thing? Oh, these don't do anything. I don't think this app is ready. Your internet connection seems to be working. Oh, that's what it does. Uh, okay. In system, there's a bug report tool. You can install a guest account, configure the system boot. Is this the grub customizer tool? I, there's no feedback, so I don't know. You can install the GNOME desktop or the Maui shell. This is cool. I'm not familiar with the Maui shell. But I don't know if I would install GNOME on top of KDE. That sounds like trouble. In security, we can set up a firewall or change your encryption keys. And that is it. So it didn't open... It didn't open the boot thing. Like, I'm clicking this and nothing's happening. So this, this must not be ready. Let's just close it out. Move on to the next thing. We've got DNF Dragora, which is one of the strangest application package management tools that there is. Uh, it's been around for a long time. I don't know, what version is this? When was the last time this was updated? Oh, there's, no, there's like no information on it. Yeah, it uses, it, it works with GTK and curses and Qt. And, oh, it's 2.1.2. I should probably look up when the last release was, but it's here if you need a UI for your package management. Unless you're a technical user, you probably won't because Discover is pre-installed. And from my experience, Discover, KDE's Discover is the single best, what is this, like a package kit uh, application installer for Linux. And it doesn't even have very many dependencies. So I use the Mate desktop on my main rig and I use Discover as the front end for installing and updating packages. Though that, well, this took a little while, but and the theme, the theme feels off. Like, why is this orange? Up here is orange and the, the loading thing that was here a second ago looked off too. But you can manage all of your packages here, your updates and things, and then it probably plugs into Flatpak. Let's get that going and I'll look for Flatpak. Do we have Flatpak? There it is, discover backend. And it says loading, maybe it's already installed. That'd be cool. EV and Vulpix cursor pack. 
Where is this coming from? Like what? Let me let me blow this up for you. <laughs> what like where? What repo is this coming from? It's not providing a lot of information here. I like that there's zero ratings and there's three stars. Is there a license? Risk of proprietary software. So while Discover is running in the background, I guess we can take a look at a couple of other things. It comes with Cavantum, which is a cute theme manager. I can't really tell if it, if it uses it. Well, it says it does. It says KV Ambience. That might be why certain things are messed up. Like this is orange. It might be that Cavantum is, is messing with the system themes. Is that something I broke or did it come that way? I wonder if installing the Ubuntu theme screwed it up. This sounds like something that would happen. Update configuration, configure automatic updates, OM update config UI. The, I wonder if this is a legacy thing because Discover can handle all of this now. Or I guess if you're running like a server setup, then maybe you don't want Discover or something. I don't know. And now let's take a look at Open Mandriva's software repository selector. So something I want to do here is install OBS so that I can record some stuff that's happening on my main computer without taxing the CPU. So I, I would record from Open Mandriva, record the output of my workstation on Open Mandriva. But OBS isn't in the default repo, so I think I need to add some of these. So it looks like Cooker is the development branch. They have rolling and they have, I like that they have rolling and they have rock. So they have rolling rock. They should call Cooker AVGN or something, I don't know. Enable testing repos, unsupported, restricted, and non-free just by clicking these check boxes, so that's cool. Third party repos, you can get you some Brave, Chrome, uh, not Chrome OS, but the Chrome browser, Microsoft Edge, Skype. Does anybody still use Skype? The Visual Studio Code IDE, and of course, everybody loves Microsoft Teams. So I clicked OK and it just closed. There was no confirmation or anything, so I don't know if, it, if those changes actually stuck. Oh, and now it's asking me for my password. Oh, it's asking me for my password to add some repos. Yeah, yum repos. That might be a uh, DNF thing. Let's take a look at the package manager after this. Let's Let's finish confirming these and then we'll drop into a terminal. We'll look at NeoFetch and see what the package manager is. So I'm starting to think I made a mistake messing around with the themes because there's no way that the terminal is supposed to look like this. This, this brown and the, the orange is definitely from Ubuntu. So it looked like Open Mandriva at the beginning of this video, but now it just kind of looks like a, a Frankenstein. So do we have yum? We do not. Do we have DNF? We do. Okay. So we'll do sudo DNF install neofetch. And do we need anything else? Maybe btop? Got to update the repos. It's just doing regular DNF stuff. You'd see the same thing happen on Fedora or probably any other distro that uses DNF. That took a bit longer than I would have liked, but we'll install something right after this and I'll see if it, it takes the same amount of time. NeoFetch is already installed, but BTOP is not, so that's all we're going to install here. I've talked about BTOP in other other videos and streams and stuff. I really like it. It shows a lot of information like your temperatures, your current clock speed, disk information, network information. I know that it's small and I could blow it up, but I'm, I'm guessing that I'm going to zoom in in Caden Live so you can see this better. And if I made it larger, then I'd have to change it with a transition. I don't want to do it, but this is the idea. So now let's do NeoFetch. Take a look. This logo. Oh, come on now. Why did it do that? Am I going to have to change the window size anyways? Ah, okay, fine. I really like the logo though. Oh, no way. It's like broken. <laughs> is this NeoFetch doing it or is it like open man? Is it the terminal? It just, it, it shoves this here. Oh, well. This is a cool logo, but Open Mandriva 4.90, Linux kernel 518. I think I read all this earlier. It uses RPM and DNF. Uh, what was I looking for here? I don't remember. You've seen all this stuff before, so there's nothing new. Let's get Flatpak install. Let's do sudo DNF install Flatpak. Let's do Steam if it's there, and we'll do OBS Studio. 
I'm guessing on the names for this. Sometimes OBS Studio has a dash, other times it doesn't. But I want to see kind of what it does. It found a lot of stuff. What did we find? Oh, wow. It found them all. All in the cooker repo. So in the development repo, I got Flatpak, OBS Studio, and Steam. All in one fell swoop. Excellent. I think that... Let me do a quick search for Flatpak because I want to get the Discover back in too. I don't like how it has to refresh these repos each time. Like we just did it and it should know that and it should just read from the cache, but I don't know. All right, there we go. That's exactly what I was looking for. Discover, backend. All right, 152 packages at 366 megabytes. Let's do it. So while this is installing, I'll minimize it so that I can do some cuts without you guys knowing. I'm gonna plug in the Distro Delves test external USB hard drive. Oops, not that one. Ah, great, now it's updating Discover while DNF is running. That, the only good things can come of this. Oh man, this is bad. Yikes. Okay, let me see if I can fix. Now the system's having a hard time with the updates and stuff going on in the background. It, it, I'm, I'm having trouble finding stuff. Like, the, the, everything's delayed. It's really having a struggle. Where the heck is it? Oh, it's under settings. Boy, that's annoying. You've got settings, you have system, and you have utilities. And they all have different stuff. And, and this keeps refreshing on me. Like, I'm trying to get to desktop presets. <laughs> all right, let's switch it back to Open Mandriva. Can we do that? Or is it, like, is it totally borked? So I'm having to drop to a TTY and do a restart because I, I guess there's just too much going on and Terry Zod checked out and the it just got really screwed up and corrupted. So I'm tired of waiting and we're just gonna do a hard reset, so. And we're back, hopefully with a non-broken theme. Does everything look good again? Oh my God, okay. So it looks like that desktop theme picker completely broke the desktop, or at least I, I'm unable to revert it through the desktop presets. Let me see if I can revert it through KDE settings instead of that weird desktop thing. It thinks that we're on Open Mandriva. What if we just switch to Breeze? Yeah, change the whole thing. I bet that it's Cavantum that's causing trouble. Oh, this is worse. Oh, man. Yikes. Okay. So, uh, I'm not going to go any deeper into the desktop stuff. I'm just going to go back to the original Mandriva uh, desktop and we're gonna try to work with it I know it's gonna be ugly but I guess I can't fix it Cavantum has taken over the computer and I don't know how to fix it off the top of my head so we're just gonna try to move past it so what we're gonna do now is plug in the distro delves test external SSD with all of the files and stuff on it we're gonna see how open Mandriva 5 handles it We'll be testing video and audio playback and images. And if you're familiar with distro delves, you know the whole thing. So is this watchable? Like, did it actually record? It recorded nothing. Yeah, okay. So this was probably simple screen recorder that failed because the actual size of the file is zero. So let's pop open the monitor so that we can keep an eye on things. Actually, let's use BTOP that way we're not using any of the system's resources to like render a full GUI and everything. So we got BTOP over here, so we can see that and we'll tile this. Drop into Distro Delve. We've got all of our folders, we have apps. Start with the archives, 7-zip is good. Oh, it opens it in the, in the uh, file manager. Can I, can you not do that? Like if I open it with arc, there we go. It's, it might, what? <laughs> okay, that's weird. So we don't have RAR support. Dolphin doesn't know what to do with BZIP or GZIP. It opens the XV straight, or I guess the TAR straight in Dolphin, and it does the same thing with ZIP. I don't hate this. This is kind of how Windows does it too, but I don't like how it's inconsistent. Like 7-ZIP, it opens here, but then RAR, it opens in, what is this tool called? Arc? and then it can't display anything. So the workflow is a little weird. Maybe it's a, a meme or mime type, whatever it's called. On the audio side of things, it opens with SM Player, 
which isn't bad. That's how I prefer it. I don't really have any need for like media centers and stuff like rhythm box and I don't use anything like that. So it opened this one in K-Wave, which is a, I mean, look at the icons. This is a really old application. Does it have a thing like a copyright when it was last updated? It, 2016, that can't be the most recent. That's just when the license was updated probably. Anyway, so yeah, there's K-Wave. <laughs> And it's the default media player for some formats like FLAC and MP2, apparently. I like the metadata when you hover over it. It shows everything like that. I don't know of, a, of a, another file manager that does that. So that's cool. So media playback is a little wonky. It, it uses, uh, oh, a third one. It uses Elsa. Okay. So we have K-Wave. SM player and Elsa all of them are, are being used so on the video side it's got thumbnails for everything and it wants to play oh hey look at that the playback is ultra choppy you can see the CPU is working very hard but the temperature is low so it's not like it probably could be working harder I mean 56 degrees is, isn't isn't that warm for a, a mobile CPU. It's not mobile, but could be, I guess. And this appears to be tanking my whole computer. Like the, it's having a real struggle. Nothing, oh, the mouse is starting to lag. Okay, so video playback is pretty much a no-go. Oh, I see what's happening. It, it's, if there's a video that's already playing and I double click this, it just goes back to the video that's playing. It doesn't cue it up or anything. That's really weird. I thought that I was watching the videos that I was clicking, but it was still on that flash video because that's the one that was playing. These apps are kind of hokey. I don't know how I feel about them. We have thumbnails for all of the photos except for the HEIC file, which is kind of surprising actually because HEIC isn't like an obscure thing it's just a um, like a, a high definition or high compression format that you get on modern phones so I don't know why that's not supported as far as apps go we've got the itch setup which is like a self-contained binary installer and it recognized that it was executable but nothing's popped up so I don't know if I don't see anything in the process tree either so like it may have just crashed we open a terminal, let's take a look at, do we have wine? We do not have wine, okay. So we'll do sudo dnf install wine staging because that seems to be what most distros use. And there is no wine staging, so let's just get regular old wine. Wow, over a gig worth of dependencies. I guess let's see how fast it is. All things considered, that was pretty fast. It's wine 7.13 in the default repos. I don't know if that's staging or stable. Probably should, but they just call it wine. So let's see if we can install like Battle.net. Battle.net uses Qt, doesn't it? It should just work out of the box. All right, wine installer is doing its thing. So while this is going, let's see if we can get itch setup to work. Just run it like a binary. Oh, oh, is that what's going on? Huh, yeah, it doesn't like this file for some reason. I don't know what the issue is. I'm able to install it on other distros. But it just says permission denied and then doesn't do anything. But it looks like Battle Networks. So all I did was install Wine and I launched through Wine the Battle Net setup and then boom, we're installing. So that's a good sign. Ooh, double clicking a Flatpak ref file opens up Dolphin. You guys know how I feel about that. That's how it should be. So we've got like two installers going right now. We've got Wine and we have Discover opening a flat pack and the system is just totally pegged. Let me turn this down so we can see it. Oh, I can't. Oh, Btop is, there we go. So Btop is like kind of non-responsive, but it's still kind of hanging in there. Battle, the Battle.net installer is doing all the work. And then I saw like flat pack package something pop up. So that's probably Discover. So we're really putting poor Terry Zaw through his paces, huh? So 0AD usually takes a little while to install because it's a really big game. 
So while we're waiting for it, let's take a look at the uh, last few things that I kind of skimmed over or didn't even mention uh, while this is installing. So there's Bluetooth, and it's enabled and set up out of the box, but doesn't have any devices to connect to. It does find devices, so that's good. So I think, I think that basically confirms that Bluetooth works out of the box. We have Night Color, which... Uh, what did it do? I moved it here. We can turn it on. It doesn't actually change anything. But that could be just like a recording artifact. I don't know. Speaking of recording, let's take a look at OBS. Probably not the best plan to screw around with OBS while this is downloading and installing. But hey, let's live dangerously. OBS comes up and it looks horrifying. The theme is all kinds of screwed up. We're not going to be streaming. We're going to be recording for this test, so we'll optimize for that. Use all of the defaults. It's going to do a little test recording, and it's probably going to be just pathetic, but we'll see. Oh boy, the base resolution is 1080, but the output resolution is 426 by 240 at 30 frames a second. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to do what I want to do with this machine, if that's what OBS thinks that the best settings are going to be. Okay, let's add a source, like for example, the whole screen seems like a good source. Oh man, it's lagging even showing the display. Let's just hide it. And can we, can we record at all? Oh, it's actually doing okay. Where are the stats? Let's bring up the stats. Oh, no, uh-uh. Look at all the frames we're dropping. And this is recording at like, what was it, 240 or something? Something crazy? I can't even open this. It's recording at 426 by 240. And it it can't even hold 30 frames. It's taking 50 milliseconds to render a frame. <laughs> I might have to play around with this off, like off recording. So I do want to try to record something through this machine, but I, if it, it can't even do that crazy low resolution, so that might not be an option. Okay, and then the last thing I want to look at is printers. I didn't test my printer settings beforehand, so I don't know if anything is even going to show up here. But it's worth a try. Now, oh, look at that, brother. Hey, so it found my network printer. Excellent. So that checks off pretty much all of the boxes for like a regular distro delves test. You've got Bluetooth, you've got printer support. I guess we haven't looked at networking, but I, I don't have anything set up to test network, so maybe we'll do that on the next distro. But the games are installed. Let's see how they run. So we've got Cave Story, and I'll just zoom in so that you guys can see it. I'll have BTOP running in the background too. You guys won't see BTOP, but I'll be able to see it, and I'll talk to it. So let's move, let's do this. Let's move Cave Story here. And that way I can keep a, keep an eye on BTOP. Or actually, let's just tile it. Let's... There we go. Hopefully, either I'll zoom into Cave Story or I'll leave it zoomed out and you guys can see BTOP. This is kind of weird looking, but... I want to see how the system behaves when we have a game going. And I mean, okay, this is like, there's not really a whole lot happening, but at least it's something. All right, get a feel for the control. Z is jump, X is probably shoot or something. I don't know the controls. Maybe this wasn't the best game to pick. It looks great, it runs great. Yeah, I can't really figure out how to do anything. There's a bad dude, jump on him. No. All right, that's enough cave story, I think. Let's go to a game I know how to play. Thank you for installing Zero AD Empire's Ascendant. So this game is kind of a classic open source game, open source like, um, what is it, Age of Empires clone? That sort of thing. I think it's okay. It, it seems like it's kind of hard to get into. Do I need to go to matches? Like what's going on? There we go. Uh, it, it's just, it's weird. I've, I've played it with friends before and it's definitely funner multiplayer. All right, so zero AD is running. It's not terrible. I mean, you know, obviously it's not good, but I'm able to control my units. So we'll have you cut trees, you go gather. 
We'll do that, and then we'll probably need another lumber person. These are my swordsmen. Where's the dog? There's a horse. Do I not get a dog, or is that... I think that's like Britain that gets dogs. These are spearmen. These are swordsmen. And I'll just go send you into the abyss. And yeah, I mean, it's working okay. You could play this. It's not the best quality or best frame rate in the world, but it's definitely playable if you're really into this game. And that also means that you can play a game like Zero AD on Open Mandriva 5.0. This is a technical beta, but you can play it on here using really low spec hardware. So I, I would call this a success overall. So as I wind this video down, I, I think that I'll say that Open Mandriva is surprisingly good. And I don't mean surprisingly in a, in a bad sense. It's more that people don't know about it. People don't hear about it. People don't really, especially in my circle, nobody, I don't know anybody that uses it. And there are distros that are like that, that are jank and don't work right on most hardware but apparently Open Mandriva is not one of them. And for a technical beta, I'd say this is pretty good. The biggest issues that we saw were with that theme thing. And that, that must just be like a, a, a challenge in general because Open Mandriva is not the only distro that has one. And it's not the only distro that gets all screwed up when you change themes. That just seems to be a KDE thing. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't knock it for that, though if that's what the themes do, maybe don't ship with it or test it a little bit better. I don't know. Overall, the performance was good. The issues that we saw with DNF don't really have anything to do with Open Mandriva. You'd see them on Fedora too. And I know that people know all sorts of ways of, of refreshing the repos faster. It's like maybe it's a mirror issue or something. But yeah, I don't think we really ran into a single thing that caused Open Mandriva to be a cut below the rest like it just seems like a run-of-the-mill Linux distro that you could pick up and use so hey if you're looking for a new distro and you want to try something totally new and different but also compatible with all of the the skills and Linux know-how that you already have Open Mandriva could be a good choice but that's gonna wrap this one up I hope that you liked this kind of old-school OG style of disk distro review preview or whatever not using a script, I'm just talking to the microphone exactly how I would if I was live streaming with no chat. So let me know what you think of this format, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.